Hey, hey, you guys, Stockton here from Better Than Data. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing Facebook's event ID deduplication, which is a critical part to get right when you are sending data through both the browser and through a server like server side Google Tag Manager using Facebook's conversions API. It is a critical component to make sure that you are not duplicating your events to make sure that you're not sending actually two of the exact same event to Facebook. And the event ID will help Facebook know which uh, events to remove to deduplicate is kind of, is the term they use and so that you're you're sending both events but Facebook will know that it's the same event and only keep the one now over at better than data what we do is we teach agencies and freelancers and consultants how to get insights from their data so there's a huge part of a huge part of that is the data collection side of things. We work a ton with Google Tag Manager. We teach, we have courses on you know, web GTM to server side GTM and all of those spaces in between. And what we've done is we've put together a quiz over on Better Than Data that you can go to to take and see what that next step is for you. So it'll kind of help assess where you are in terms of knowing uh, GTM and Google Analytics and things like that, and then help give you the next step of what you can do to wow, razzle, and dazzle your clients. All right, let's jump into Facebook event ID deduplication. So a quick overview using our handy dandy whiteboard here in the middle, let's say we're gonna, we have Facebook, right? And what we're all used to is having the pixel send data to Facebook by installing the code on the page or installing the code through Google Tag Manager or things like that. But now what we also have is this advent of their server side tracking, server side, and the method of sending events here is not the pixel. It is through what they call the conversions API or CAPI for short. So conversions API. And through the conversions API, you can send events to Facebook as well. So let's say that we're sending a purchase event through both the pixel and through the conversions API. Well, without this event ID property, that would actually just look like two separate events coming into Facebook. And Facebook would say, great, I got two events here. That's awesome. Two people made a purchase, right? But what we can actually do is assign the event ID so that Facebook knows that it's the same event from the pixel and the server, and therefore they will know to deduplicate it. So let's first take a look at an example of what it shouldn't look like or what a bad example of when event ID deduplication is not set up. So here we have our web GTM. And of course, when you're working with a web GTM and a server GTM, um, then the method of getting data to the server is through the GA4 tag. So we have our GA4, we're gonna look at a page view event. So we have our GA4 page view event here. And if we peek at the config tag real fast, we'll see that it, we are sending data to our custom tracking domain here. So we are sending all GA4 hits via server side. And then if we look at the Facebook page view event here, it's just the pixel tag template that will fire the events browser. And this is gonna be for the page event. So let's preview this and see what it looks like inside of events manager when we connect everything up and we have that browser and the server event coming in. So here we are, we have a page view that loaded up. Let's view the page view event container loaded. So we have our GA4 page view that fired and we also have our Facebook page view that fired. Now let's look under events manager. So we have the browser page view that came in. Notice how the event ID column is blank. And in just one second, we should see the server side event come through. So here it is inside of server side debug. We have that Facebook conversions API tag fired. So sometimes it takes just a second. All right, so here we are. The both of the events have come through, but we're noticing something pretty interesting. It is already said deduplicated for the server event. And the reason it's doing that is actually just because the event names match. However, what will happen is if we go and visit other pages, so let's visit the join page, 
Maybe we'll check out the uh, Tools We Love page. And even on this Tools page, let's do a reload, and I'll show you how this can get a bit muddled inside of the uh, Events Manager when there's no event IDs. And this is kind of an issue just for uh, page views in particular. So, all right, so now that those server events are starting to come in, we're noticing something a little bit interesting. All of those subsequent page view events from the server are actually all being discarded and deduplicated associated with this first page view event. And it's because it doesn't know that these are actually page views from the other pages. Well, I mean, it has the page URL, but it doesn't know to like, it can, it's having a hard time assigning them because it all matches, all of these event names match. And so without the event ID, it's just like, okay, we'll get rid of all the server events. So you would actually not be tracking any further page view server events with this type of setup. Um, so what we need to do is actually come to uh, WebGTM and assign a unique event ID to all of these different events. And to, let's start with the page view event here. In the tag template, the details are under more settings, and then there's this property called event ID. Here is where we need to fill in some type of variable that will be unique for this one particular event, but then match in both the, the J4 tag and in the Facebook tag. To do that, we're just gonna reference a built uh, a custom variable. So I'm gonna go choose variable. We're gonna add a new variable. Under variable configuration, we're gonna select and go to the community template gallery. From here, we're going to search for event ID. And probably any of these work, uh, we're just gonna grab this one called unique event ID, and then we're gonna hit um, add to workspace. I already have it added, so I'm just gonna choose this as the template, and then let's call this, um, let's call this Facebook event ID just like that, and we'll go ahead and hit save. So now that new variable we just created has been filled in under the more settings event ID for the Facebook page view. We'll save that. And then what we need to do is match that or add the same variable to the GA4 page view tag. So we'll come GA4 page view. And under event parameters, we will type in event underscore ID and then we'll reference the same variable. So I can just hit the Lego brick. Let's search for Facebook event ID right there, and we will hit save. Okay, now let's clear some of this data and let's re-preview this, and then we'll visit a few pages to see if those uh, events now share an event ID and will be deduplicated. We can confirm this by going to container loaded and if we look at the new variable at that step, it should be called Facebook event ID right here. We can see that it ends in 9229. And if we look at the actual details of the tags themselves, we can go to GA4 page view. We have the new event ID property here. So 9229, that matches. And then Facebook page view, we should also have a matching page view here. And in events manager, we now see that the events coming in have an event ID and they match here with both the browser and the server. Okay, so now let's visit a few more pages. Let's go to the join page. Let's go to the tools we love page. Let's go to the about page. Let's just go visit a few pages. Let's go to the quiz page. And now when we come and view the events manager, we see all of the browser events have already registered and they're coming from uh, server side GTM. It may just take a moment. We can see all of these different page view events and they all have the Facebook conversions API tag fired. Okay, so now those server events are coming in and the details here now look much different, right? We can see that every single individual page view event has the browser and the server. It has this nice little tree structure, and then um, it's showing that the server event is deduplicated, which is expected um, because, I mean, we can see right here, Facebook deduplicates events that have the same event ID to avoid overcounting the total number of events received. And this is what proper event deduplication would look like if you're trying to troubleshoot or debug this and um, 
every event would have this nice little tree structure and the event IDs would need to match right here. Now, one gotcha, right? The, one of the biggest things I see that is super frustrating uh, because I experienced this and it took a while to finally figure out what the solution was, but if you sequence tags, so if let's say we have um, our purchase tag here, and if we come down to the GA4 settings, advanced settings under tag sequencing, and we say fire the config tag before this, right? So we assign this, like that would make a lot of sense to do and it shouldn't be harmful. But for some reason, when we do this and we have it set up this way, those event IDs get thrown off. So this deduplication wouldn't happen properly because the event ID from the server or from Facebook, these would be different. So tag sequencing seems to mess up this sort of event ID and, and deduplication. So the recommendation is if you are sending data from the uh, browser web GTM and from the server side GTM that you don't sequence your GA4 tags. So make sure that everything is just firing properly on the events, that everything is available at the right time for those events, and then turn off any sequencing so that your event IDs don't get thrown off and you won't mess up your Facebook stats because it's it'll be overinflated because it, uh, the event IDs will be off and therefore Facebook will receive more events without deduplicating them. So a little, bit of a long story. So there's that. All right. So that is a look at Facebook event ID deduplication, kind of the details behind it. We looked at an example that wasn't ideal. And then we went and set in a variable that would solve the problem for us. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.